Pakistani elections. So so far, the preliminary results have Imran Khan's party. I think I got this point with leading in 136 districts. That's three times the next closest one. But you're now seeing reports in Pakistan of of two separate things. Uh, one, the army is in the streets. The police are in the streets. They're surrounding polling stations, and you're seeing a lot of reports and videos of efforts to change the votes. They're kicking election officials out. There's a lot of concern that that number 136 by tomorrow morning in Pakistan could be pushed down lower. Separately, you're seeing also uh, surface in, in Pakistan an attempt by the kind of military-connected uh, uh, officials to take the independents who are associated with PTI and pressure them to join other parties. So even though Imran Khan's party might win a majority after torture and bribery, you could have a different government take power. So you've from the podium stood up for free and fair elections. But free and fair elections are one thing, but if you torture your way to a majority after that, that doesn't quite that doesn't quite live up to kind of the values that you were stating from there. So this seems like a pretty pivotal moment for Look, kind Ryan, of America and the and Pakistan relations. Look, so, Ryan, the thing about preliminary uh, results is that they are uh, preliminary, and uh, I am not going to get ahead of any official results, and so I'm not going to uh, comment or speculate further on what uh, a government could look like, what the makeup could be, or anything like that. So you would what be I okay just, if, what, what I will they, just reiterate again right. is that we condemn uh, all instances of election-related violence, even <laughs> some of the kinds that you are describing, uh, that took place in the weeks preceding. Yeah, dude, you don't understand. It's just like different over there. Pakistan media has the excuse that it is directly controlled by the military. What on earth is the excuse of the New York Times? Okay. Hmm. How did this happen, dude? As results begin to trickle in Thursday evening, the party of former Prime Minister uh, Nawaz Sharif, the military's preferred party of the moment, was still expected to win, but it did not look like it would pull off the easy victory that it was widely predicted. Parliamentary candidates allied with another former Prime Minister, Imran Khan, were neck and neck with Mr. Sharif's party. In many races in Punjab, the country's most populous province and political heartland. Dude. Dude. It's, it's just like, this is precisely, for the record, this is precisely why I say that when America talks about, like, democracy, liberal values, rule-based international order, all of that is a lie, <laughs> okay? Like, our enemies, our enemies, our political enemies, our foreign adversaries have better elections than this. And yes, I mean Venezuela, okay? This is not a defense of Venezuela or Maduro, by the way. But having said that, even fucking, even fucking Maduro has like third party, uh, third party officiators involved in his elections. Whereas like the Pakistan one is almost analogous to the Venezuela situation, okay? With respect to jailing your political opposition, Right. Whereas like America has nothing for it because they're an ally and because we don't want Imran Khan to be uh, the prime minister any longer. And we want the military to continue controlling. I mean, and Imran Khan is like a it's not like Imran Khan, by the way, deviates from the American perspective all that much. Hassan Abi Doctrine demonstrating again. Why didn't the U.S. take a direct approach in this? Because no, the U.S. did take a direct approach in this. Okay. This is the U.S.'s direct approach. Bro, there is no world in which, like, like him, hate him, doesn't matter, okay? Imran Khan definitely uh, is, is one of those figures where it's like, it's the, same, it's the same thing that I've brought up with Erdogan, right? It's like, well, he's not, like, he's not not corrupt, okay? But he's, I guess, somewhat less corrupt. And also, he's my corrupt, okay? He's my guy, right? I'm a Pakistani guy, and he is my guy. Whereas the other guy is going to also be corrupt, if not more corrupt, and then he's also not going to be my guy at all. He's going to be America's guy. So people, when they have that choice, they're always going to go with their guy that is not a direct puppet of the United States of America, okay? And that is what's happening in this circumstance as well. 
Hasan is the reason why I'm happy I hate politics. Do you actually know all of this stuff? L ads, L corrupt the streamer. Do you actually know all of this stuff? Or are you just spewing what you think it is? I mean, is Imran Khan and his entire party arrested or not? Does the Pakistani military rule Pakistan or not? Is the Pakistani military directly controlled by the CIA or not? These are all questions you must ask yourself. And the answer is going to be yes to all of them. Okay. So why is the United States of America not taking a position that is similar to Venezuela in this circumstance? Okay. That's one of the takes that makes me know you understand the third world. We will always prefer our homegrown despots and the foreign place ones. That's the one of the takes that makes me know you understand the world. Exactly. That's it. And a lot of Americans don't get it because they think like, why don't they want this guy that the New York Times is portraying as like, you know, uh, uh, on board with the things that I like. And it's because that's a lie. They're lying. America's preferred candidates are not actually like, they don't actually have good politics. Okay. They don't. It's just the media tells you that they do. So you don't have any other interest in like figuring out if that's true or not, or even getting a better understanding of what the people on the ground feel about the situation. That's the issue. Okay. And yes, this is still my opinion, by the way. This is like, I mean, I'm, I'm basing my opinion off of facts, but it's still my opinion. That seems to be what happened in the El Salvador election this week too. Dude is a bit of a wannabe dictator. Yes. Um, <laughs> I say formerly Palestinian Bukele uh, is, is, well, I, I would say he's more aligned with like State Department interests than uh, you'd think. But he is profoundly popular, I guess, in El Salvador. But he is also a psychopath. Okay? He is literally a fucking psychopath. He's loved. You know, there, he, definitely, he definitely has a, a... Definitely popular, despite the fact that he... Um, despite the fact that he chose to change his country's currency to crypto and... and and all this stuff. He did used to be a, a, a bit of a leftist, I guess, or people thought he was a leftist. Uh, I've, I've written him off since the crypto shit, even though he is, um, even though he is, uh, he is Palestinian, technically. Uh. Anyway. My partner and her whole family were born in El Salvador. He's done so much good for the country, but it's super sketchy the way he's getting things done. She's torn about supporting him or not. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, he's the crypto bro who like does like dragnet arrests on every single person, but also at the same time, El Salvador is fucked. So I don't even know how you would deal with that situation at all. I'm Salvador and I can vouch everyone loves him. He's done the best job at making the country safe. I don't know what the crypto situation is. Haven't heard anything about that. Bro, how are you going to be Salvadorian and be like, and not know that your nation's currency is just like, is, is fucking a peg to the Bitcoin. <laughs> That's crazy. But I mean, I guess it makes sense. Uh, it's just like, this how Americans don't know a shit ton about what's going on in their country and they live here. You know what I mean? Anyway, he's, um. They use the USA dollar, I think, too. Nobody uses the local currency anyway, and everybody uses the dollar. Generally speaking, Arun Anal says, uh, Indian Hasanabi says, generally speaking, my analysis of this is that the Pakistani military and the U.S. State Department align on a lot of issues, but it's not as though the Pakistani military takes 100% market share orders from the U.S. It's a bit more nuanced than that. It's a holdover from the Cold War when Pakistan aligned with the U.S. because India backed the USSR. Um, I mean, but it, but they, I feel like the Pakistani military one runs the country and two definitely still is like aligned with America's interests and will do things that the American government wants them to do. Am I wrong on that? I don't know. It's kind of like, um, Assad Arabia. Okay. Assad Arabia has its own interests in the region uh, is a powerful ally, but, and, and we'll do things from time to time that the United States goes, Hey, Assad Arabia, don't do that. That's kind of fucked up. Why did you chop an American journalist? That's like not chill. 
Okay, but they still kind of do that when they want to. As long as broadly they are on board with everything else that the United States wants them to do. Salvador and my mom watches their news all the time. She was showing me all proud of the massive prison they built and the president is showing it off while I was watching it horrified. It's the largest prison, I think, in the Western Hemisphere. I'm leftist, but I think his crime reforms are good. Like the Salvadoran situation is different from America. Sometimes harsh measures are needed. It's a client state in the literal sense of the word client. Pakistan does whatever it wants because it buys a shit ton of hardware from the U.S. Yeah, it's like that. The thing is, like, I think the Imran Khan situation, as far as I understand it, is, like, quite literally related to uh, him not being uh, lockstep with U.S. interests all the time, even if it was, like, aesthetically not lockstep with U.S. interests. Like, that was enough for America to write him off. If that makes sense. Bukele and Mele retweet every single positive mention they get on Twitter like they're Detroit rappers. <laughs> That's awesome. What is this? Why Naib Bukele's re-election matters from friend of the show, Bianca Gralau. Naib Bukele accomplished what presidents before him couldn't. He broke the gangs that used to control El Salvador, but how? And who's paying for the consequences? This video was done in collaboration with El Faro. Bianca, I would like to know who is funding you. Based on what you're trying to do in this video, I can probably guess who is funding your videos. Um, I have seen people die in the neighborhood bus drivers who were arrived by mistake and disappeared. As a Salvadoran resident of the capital, I can tell you that gang members are collaborators. Um, people will see that the whole thing is inhumane as fuck in like 10 years. I think there are some nuances with respect to massive arms deals for fighter jets and other weapons from China and Imran Khan denying anything happening to the Uyghurs in Xinjiang. No, I don't know. That's that's ridiculous. You want to know why that's ridiculous? The entire Arab world denies that anything happened to the fucking Uyghurs in Xinjiang, mostly for the exact same reasons as to why uh, that Imran Khan did. So we are not treating any other fucking Arab leader in the same way that we're treating uh, Imran Khan. And also... Nobody gives a shit. Like, America does not actually care about Muslim safety. Like, let's be real. Um, I think it's more so that, like, because even at a time when, um, what was it? Like, the, the, the League of Arab Nations or whatever the fuck it's called, like, their, their position on the Uyghur uh, situation in Xinjiang is that nothing was going on there as well. And at the time, I remember yelling at chatters who would bring that up to me because they were like, Hassan, you say that there's like a cultural genocide happening uh, to the Uyghurs in, in Xinjiang, but you know, the, the Arab leadership in Arab nations don't believe that they disagree with it. And I would literally argue with them that like their sentiment on this does not fucking matter because they are not going to be reflective of one, the reality on the ground. And two, they're not going to be even reflective of like the Muslim world in general. Their opinion oftentimes is a, a political one. Their their goal uh, or their their uh, their their statements are guided by their own personal interest in like maintaining uh, a relationship with China, for example, a positive one. So, Xinjiang, I know, uh is Xinjiang. Imran's opposition, even to the army, was very marginal, having more civilian control over higher up army appointments and not even trying to actually break the monopoly of army in Pakistan. Yeah. Um, come to Xinjiang. It's open to tourism. Yeah, dude. Why did America not clap Modi like they clapped uh, Imran Khan? Modi is way more pro-Putin. 
I uh, I think, well, f one, it's India. I'd focus more on the massive arms deal with China, which Arab states in the MENA region have tried and have been massively opposed by the U.S. and thus not subsequently gone through. In Pakistan, the opposite happened despite major pressure. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the major reasons. That's what I mean. Yeah, you're you're right on this. I think that that definitely is a bigger focus here. America does not like it when you do arms deals with foreign adversaries like China or like Russia. Okay. Um, there is perhaps no better example of this than Turkey getting missile defense systems from Russia. For example, America does not like that. Okay. You are not allowed. That is not a thing that you can do. Also, um, I think the, our allegiance with India is that like, uh, India is the Western backed, uh, liberal equivalent, liberal capitals equivalent of China in the most reductive terms. Imran Khan was not truly anti-American in the way he presented himself. He was just not compliant enough and America just gave their blessings for a soft coup that was probably going to happen anyway. Imran Khan was already running afoul of the military due to internal reasons as well. Yeah. That's why I'm saying like it took, it, it was for nothing for the most part. Like, that's what I was trying to stress in this circumstance. As far as, like, what I've read from The Intercept reporting on the matter, like, the reasons as to why Imran Khan was, was uh, quickly, uh, you know, on pack watch, I guess, is very marginal. Like, it, it's more aesthetic even. Because, like, Imran Khan's, you know, Imran Khan going to Russia and meeting up with Vladimir Putin. Like, these are all things that, depending on where you are on the ally list, okay, on the client state list, depending on like your level of importance, you can get away with. Erdogan did similar shit and is still doing similar shit. You know what I mean? So, or even Modi has like obviously uh, been, even Modi has utilized the the uh, invasion of Ukraine to benefit uh, and, and be like a third party mediator for Russian gas, right? Like it's basically become a, a third party facilitator of that kind of thing. So um, all of that is, is seen as permissible depending on like the give and take. India has a much stronger institution which makes it more difficult to actually stir shit up in China and seen as opposition to Chinese influence in Indochina. Exactly. That I think is another big reason for India, of course. So yeah. Was pack watch a pun? Oh my God. I didn't even think about that. It, it, it is a bit of a pun. I, I didn't even do that on purpose. As for India, Modi is still walking a tightrope between Russia and India because of their longstanding alliance with the USSR, but he's more am amenable to the U S than previous administrations. Yeah. I, I think Modi rides for the U S am I crazy? Arun does Modi not ride for it? The U.S. interest like crazy. Yeah, he's a, he's a big time. Uh, he is big time backed by Western interests in general. Modi rides for money. Yeah, but like they're anti-China. This you? What do you mean? Indian alliance with the USSR is pretty old, so US has made a bunch of exceptions for India to collaborate with Russia and even Iran. India has no sanctions on it, even when they trade when we trade with Iran. He's still beholden to the relationship India has with Russia because India still gets a lot of stuff like hardware from Russia even today. This you? Yes, it is me. With the exception of Ukraine and buying Russian energy products and arms, which is a common position in the global South. Um, well, I focus more on the massive arms deal with China, which Arab states in the middle region have tried and have been massively opposed to. Yeah. Um, <sighs> anyway. 
I think it didn't take much to to uh, push for his ouster is what I'm saying. But the point is, the point is this, okay? What is happening in Pakistan happens at a foreign adversary, like a no-no nation, a nation that is not a client state, for example. America goes nutty mode. They literally write articles about how democracy is stolen, okay? If there is a coup, a soft coup or a hard coup in a not perfectly aligned nation state that is being led by someone who is like a social democrat or something, specifically in Latin America, America will go, finally, the people are rising up and taking over in the most democratic way possible. Even if like you see videos of the coup that is occurring and you're like, well, these guys are like Christian fascists. The fuck do you mean? They'll be like, no, 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 you don't understand. It's actually for good. Bolivia is a great example that comes to mind. So it, it is more so about what you read in the news when it comes to foreign policy and what really is like frustrating for a lot of people that listen to what I have to say about foreign policy in general is that the reason why I almost always take the America bad position or I land on that side on many instances is because America has its fingers in every pie, okay? That's what happens when you are the hegemonic superpower, okay? And when the New York Times or other organs of State Department propaganda in the United States that otherwise do a lot of great coverage, okay, uh, when they write things with objective, neutral tone, that's not always going to be exactly the, the way things are on the ground. If you take that in, and you don't filter it through the lens of what kind of propaganda am I reading right now? What are the interests at play here in the way that I am, uh, in the way that I'm, I'm being presented the story? Uh, you will, you will fall for this very common trick that America plays all the time. Right-wing reactionaries don't need to do that. So if you're on Fox News, they're just easily going to be like, yeah, these guys are brown. They deserve death. Let's go. Right? But if you're a liberal, you have to have a more nuanced perspective to the reactionary American foreign policy. And that nuance usually comes from, well, these guys are homophobic. They're anti-LGBT. They are racist. <laughs> they are, uh, you know, they don't want the liberalization of markets. Like, they're very repressive. They're very authoritarian. And all this stuff, that is like usually, there, there needs to be like additional motivating factors as to why America has to involve itself. Even though when you look at the actual circumstances in which we involve ourselves there, oftentimes the material interest that is backing our side, our position is a very authoritarian one. Historically, we have seen examples of this all over Latin America, all over the world, as a matter of fact. Okay. You know what I mean? And that's what they do. Doing this is fucking Japan. I mean, anyway. Uh, also, this didn't get coverage even in Pakistan, but there was a bomb blast in Balochistan. I fucking, I'm going to say it wrong again. Balochistan? Um, just with the elections, at least 30 plus people were killed. And it's another attempt by the Pakistani state establishment to oppress Baloch population well ahead of the election. Butchered. Yes, America bad, but keeping it 100p. If there's got to be a hegemon, it might as well be us. Yeah, dude. Yes, your position, unfortunately, in my opinion, lacks nuance and is understandably selfish. Does that make sense? Like a lot of people feel the way that you do, which is why they have an immediate reactionary uh, distaste to the kind of coverage that I offer when it comes to foreign policy. I do not place... A, a, a different i i don't place a different uh, uh level of value to people in living in like foreign nations that are people living in foreign nations that's that's usually where i deviate from a lot of people 
you know it's very it's very selfish for people to think that way and i can describe why i can describe why that selfishness is the exact same modus operandi of capital owners that end up reinforcing the position that you're in that actually fucks you over okay imperialism being the highest stage of capitalism highest state of capitalism imperialism being a necessity under a capitalist organization of the economy uh can can very in in almost identical ways uh work as an analog for your experiences domestically the approach that you have as a part of uh the the western world and the imperial core to america being the leader the dominant force on the planet and and not really caring about not really caring about like what happens to all of those in the periphery in the third world under unequal exchange that we benefit from in the imperial core is the exact same approach that many rich people have to you know how the country is run why should i care about health care i i got money i can pay for it i can pay for it so what if some poor people can't that means I can still get the best possible health care for myself. You know? When it comes to foreign policy, a lot of people can be a little bit more selfish because the media will feed into your selfish perspective regularly by giving you, uh, by drip feeding you information that helps you feel more reinforced. Uh, in your position that like America has to be the dominant force. It'll also, they'll also fear monger to a ridiculous degree. Huh. Anyway. Isn't this the trust fund baby champagne socialist guy? Hell yeah. That is me. Um, Islamist fundamentalist trust fund baby uh champagne socialist <clears throat> oligarch an oligarch myself anyway um i love champagne socialist so much yeah champagne socialism is like a fun little thing yeah private jet flying i use pri i use my private jet probably more than taylor swift does if we're being real i'm in the top 30 I'm also a tanky too. I'm a I'm a jihadist communist backed by the Chinese government and the Iranian government pushing for Hamas to do Sharia law here in the United States of America, baby. Richer than Jeff Bezos, an oligarch in his own right, Islamist fundamentalist. I'm everything and nothing at the same time. I'm all the bad things. Whatever you think is bad, I'm I'm on it. That's my thing. I'm genuinely asking, but what does the media have to gain by fearmonger all the time? What do you mean? The media's entire role in society is to normalize the cruelty that you experience. That's what they do. And, and also tell you that an alternative is far too scary and would be far worse. That is the job. That's the primary responsibility of the media. Unsubscribed. I simp for my wife. Don't do it. I'm here to tell you that these right-wing weirdos I'll follow and try to sometimes engage have now started hating on Noam Chomsky. They found out who Noam Chomsky is. So now they hate him. I simp for your wife too, Chatter. Don't do it. I can't believe we lost another wife guy, dude. Wife guys are the best. They're the best and brightest. They are the best this country has to offer. Anyway, 
right, let's continue. the election as well as on election day. We also believe that these kinds of actions have affected a number of political parties across uh, Pakistan. And we're also concerned about the steps that were taken to restrict freedom of expression, specifically around internet and cell phone use. But again, I'm just not going to... Uh, just real quick, speculate like, on results or government makeup. But, let, but let's say the Pakistani people do elect a majority of independents associated with the PTI, but then after a bunch of backroom negotiations, which are accompanied by reports of torture, all of a sudden there's another candidate that has a majority. Would that be okay with the United I'm not States? Gonna, I'm not going to speculate You can't say that wouldn't be okay with the United on, States? I'm not going to hypothesize on a made-up uh, situation that you're just describing right now. We will, at there some are, point, I have no doubt that the United States of America will comment on the election, official election results when they happen. But till then, um, uh, we will defer to the uh, uh, electoral process, which we believe uh, we take very seriously. I do need to get a haircut. It's like getting out of control. It's getting way out of control. Especially because, like, I, um, yesterday, I hate it. Could we get a free sub for one million channel points? No. Ryan Grimm's entire job is to ask these people questions, and they'll say, I won't answer that to. Yeah, but he does such a good job. I love that they still keep having uh, people like Ryan Grimm uh, in that room, though. Like, almost every one of those journalists that is in the state department room like obviously the outside of the ones that like don't even need to be in that room because they're just like copy pasting whatever the fuck the state department is saying but those guys that are in that room they they do a lot of good work in my opinion including ryan Grimm, friend of the show ryan I'm amazed they haven't found some way to kick him out. No, there's more than Ryan Grimm. There's a lot of people that, that are in that room that do like pretty solid reporting. Uh, 